Um, but my out of the money calls, I will sell on the IV spike. Um, what brokerage would you consider best for cashless exercise? I answered that. I was in the middle of answering something else. Okay, yeah, you may have to sell lower than the volatility spike, right? Like, um, so you may have to sell that contract closer to its intrinsic value than its market value. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you can you can sell that contract. Someone will buy it. Someone will want 100 mm -hmm. shares, right? I would just exercise them. Like, if we're, if we're MOASing, there's no reason not to sell one share of GameStop to get 100. If you're holding a contract at that point, you should just be exercising them on the way up. Uh, it's silly to have a contract by the time we hit a million dollars. Honestly, it'd be silly to have a contract by the time we hit 10,000. Because, you know, at $10,000, you could, you, you know, there's, there isn't a contract in the chain you couldn't exercise for like a, a you know 10 to 90 ratio or 10 to 100 ratio so you can sell 10 shares to get 100 so it's a net 90 at 9500 dollars you can exercise a 950c like there's there's no reason to be carrying uh, options contracts that high into the squeeze in, in my mind. Also, the pressure that that puts on the squeeze is enormous. Stop limits fill to the upside, right? How should you set it if the bid ask is tight? Tight? I usually, I usually set my... So, I'll, I'll usually have like a 5% spread on us. I'll have to stop. And then like a like 2% below volatility. Um, and then I'll have the limit 3% below that. Um, and you can tighten or loosen that as you see fit. So if this isn't a rule, does that make it higher upside potential or lower? Well, the difference the difference between, I think the potential's uh, equivalent, whether they roll or they don't, because um, if they roll in this cycle, there's immediately another uh, exposure date right after that, right after that roll, right? We have this ETF leap exposure and GME December monthly exposure. Um, so if they roll from, from here to here, so say we go up to, you know, 300 and then they like, this is, this is extreme, but let's just use it as an example. Say we hit 300 next week, um, and they roll it, you know, that could put us up like $500 almost. Um, I'm sorry. If we hit 300 here and then they roll that could put our price point up very high. Um, so then they only have this window here to drop the price down before it comes back up again on another exposure date. Um, that gives them a large gap here in this time frame. But the amount of FTVs that would occur from this constant upward price action would be super significant anyway. Um, and so honestly like i i don't see them i don't see it being advantageous for them to roll i think they spike try to drive it down into december um where we then spike again but then they can try to drive it down into the failures um the problem with this is it creates a massive amount of ftds right so it creates significant ftd exposure all leading into this final etf date which is the largest of the etf dates so this spike in january 25th is etf and gme leaps which are the highest open interest options chain available on both 
uh, the ETFs containing GME and GME itself. Um, and so, you know, with mounting failure to delivers going into this, you know, that, that could really just moon. Um, neither option looks to present a, a super significant advantage, but it does look that uh, a failure to roll is more advantageous or buys more time than uh, a roll does. David Carmona, I'm going to 